my friends, welcome to my channel where I share all things about homeschool on here with you guys. If you guys are new, I would love for you guys to join my channel here. I'm going to be sharing a lot of new videos with you guys very soon um, with our curriculum choices for the next year for my soon to be second grader and fourth grader. And then I'll be having some homeschool haul videos and um, lots of other things. So if you guys like those videos, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'm going to jump right into my daughter's curriculum, give you guys a check-in for quarter three, and let you guys know what's going on, what's working, what she's up to. I just did a video for my first grader, so if that video has come out, I will link the video link down below for you guys to check that out. I'm gonna get into the handwriting first, and this is cursive. This is level four from The Good and the Beautiful. I think in level three, they touch on it at the very end, but level four is where they um, start cursive, and they really, like throughout the whole book, they do it. My daughter is loving it. She's like halfway through and she is really doing such a good job. She loves coloring. She loves drawing pictures of dogs and doing the mazes and things at the bottom of the page. So that is a win-win. She usually does a couple pages at a time, maybe two to three. And so at the very beginning of the book, I have this little hack that I did because um, I noticed that she was going back to the front of the page over and over again where they have the cursive letters, um, the lowercase and the uppercase. So I just made like a copy, oops, wrong way. I made a copy for her. So when she's actually doing her workbook, it's on the side of it. So if she needs to refer back to like forming a specific letter, whether it's the capital or the lowercase one, she can look back at it. So I think that that was good to do that. You could always like tape it at the back of the book as well. Um, but she absolutely is loving cursive from the good and the beautiful before that she did another cursive workbook that she loves and I thought that was really a good pair for her to have that one done first and then go into the good and the beautiful for her language arts program she is working on level three we're almost halfway done with this um, if you're familiar with our homeschool and what we've been doing for her curriculum she did level two a little bit last year and she finished it up this year so she started this like halfway through the year, I think. And so she is enjoying it a lot. I love the fact that they have this little pocket at the front where they put all of their index cards with their poetry memorization that they're learning and the spelling words they're working on. Um, she also has this little section in the back that they refer to. Um, they have this little sign language area where she does some of her spelling in sign language. She's been memorizing some of the words that way. And then they have these like spelling challenge mountains where she reads the challenge words and when she completes all of the words and she knows how to pronounce all of the words, she puts a flag up at the top. And I just like the way that they have been teaching like sentence diagramming and verbs and adverbs. Um, I love how they do homophones throughout the workbooks. And at the very beginning, we go over like the stuff that I need to teach her if it's a new concept. And then she does a few oral things with me or I will dictate stuff to her and she'll write it down in her journal. And then um, on the other pages, she has like independent work like this where she does it all on her own and it's working out really, really well. She still enjoys The Good and the Beautiful and I'm happy about that. Now there's some things that we're reading right now where they're getting into like um, specific stories um, that are not really interesting to her and I, so we kind of skip those and then we fill it in with other things that she's interested in. I try to find other things to, you know, fill that time, like something else that she can be doing. So we like made a little agreement together for her to work on something else. But as far as like the grammar and the independent practice and spelling and memorization and stuff, those are the things in the reading she's doing. And at the end of those lessons, she has like a little area to fill out. Did she read for her 20 minutes? My daughter likes to read in the morning time when she wakes up and at nighttime and throughout the day. So I don't have any problems with having her like read and having to time her. So she'll just check off the little red 20 minutes and I'll have her write the book that she is reading for that day because she's reading a series of books and she's really into them. So I just have her write it down. Um, what book she's reading. And then there's journal entries too. Those are not her favorite, but they have journal entries like um, every few lessons to write in her notebook of something about the book she's reading, or they'll have some questions and she'll learn how to um, answer the questions in a complete sentence and the correct punctuation. And I like it a lot. It's very, very good with her writing and it's not too much. 
I think it's perfect. This is my daughter's math. She does BJU and she's done BJU since kindergarten. I have flip throughs of K through three. So if you want to check the books out and see what it looks like on the inside, I'll link them down below or you can check my channel out. But in this book in third grade, they look, learn a lot about like fractions, division and multiplication. And um, they really, really learn lots of it. So um, multiplication by like one digit numbers and they're gonna be learning decimals later on some geometry and some metric measurements um, and then they also learn about money but she's been doing a lot of division a lot of multiplication so it's been um, not super hard for her but she just has to memorize the multiplication so I purchased a few things to help her and um, I did purchase the good and the beautiful multiplication um, songbook with the mp3 Unfortunately, um, it's not really meshing with how what she really enjoys. Like I thought it was gonna be fun because she loves singing, and after I listened to it with her, it just it did seem a little cheesy. So many people said so many good things about it, and so I thought for sure we would love it. Um, we only use it like once or twice. What I did get also um, to help reinforce the multiplication is these um, multiplication math cards from Christian Bookstore. Dot com and they're just like multiplication flashcards you can probably just use those and you play war with them so six times seven is 42 five times five is 25 who has the highest number gets the card so if you guys are wanting to find games um, that might help your kids with multiplication and not spend too much money just buy like Dollar Tree flashcards multiplication or division and then you can play war with your kids so that's what we've been doing also another multiplication thing that I um, printed out for her are skip counting by twos, threes, fours, five, all the way up to like 12. And I put it all in a book for her so she could review it in the morning on her own. So that is something that she is working on um, so she can memorize all of the multiplications. So she's really good with like twos, threes, fours, but when it goes up um, to like six to nine, it gets a little harder. And obviously like 10 is easy, five is easy, two is easy, because she's learned skip counting as a kid, but um, as she got older, the larger number is a little harder for her. So that is what we're working on. And um, thank God she understands division, but we're just working on it a lot. And then um, later on in the last quarter, she'll be doing decimals and metric measurements and money and time, I think. So she's excited about that. She likes money and time. Those are easy for her. So whatever chapters are easy for her, she's into. She does love teaching textbooks. So what I've been doing lately, we just change it up a little bit. She does two, um, two lessons a week and then she'll do two lessons for teaching textbooks. But teaching textbooks, I'll have her do um, four lessons in two days because I feel like they're super easy for her. So she um, will be reviewing, let's say for instance, she's learning multiplication in here. I'll have her learn multiplication and teaching textbooks. If she's learning lines and segments in here, I will have her learn the same in teaching textbooks and have her learn the same thing. Um, lately, that's what we've been doing. It's been working out really good. And I think, um, I think we'll be kind of doing that throughout the summer. And um, I will give you guys like my ultimate decision on my curriculum choices pretty soon so you'll know what's going on. She also does um, Song School Spanish with our group subject for um, her and her brother. And so this is Song School Spanish 1. This is a really good review for them. We're pretty much done. We have a couple more chapters to go, but they've been learning the weather. They've been learning like what I want to eat, what I want to drink. Um, they're also learning like good morning, good afternoon, um, those type of things and greetings in here and so we really like this book I did a whole review on this and a flip through um, they do lots of tracing in here so it is geared for younger ages she's like a higher she's at the highest grade level I guess to do this but I wanted something that her and my son could do together and not have two separate Spanish curriculums because that's really really hard right now to have two separate ones so I like to do it together um, so that is what we do they have this little song school Spanish CD in the back where we listen to the music um, along with the chapter. And at the very beginning of the lesson, a teacher comes on online. We purchased the online DVD and we could watch it from any computer anywhere. And she comes on and does like a, you know, five to seven minute introduction to the vocabulary words that we're learning. And she asks questions and has us repeat. And I really, really like it because she explains um, everything and how you pronounce things 
correctly and I love it. The worksheets are really simple. It's a very, very easy um, Spanish, but it gets a lot of things done. I like how it's visual. I like how you use a workbook. I like how it's musical. So, you know, you're listening, you're hearing, you're writing things down. And you also have online a flashcard game that you can do as well that comes along with the program um, if you get the online DVD. So it's called like online streaming. So that's what we did. And I really, really love it. It's great. Um, I don't have to teach it, but I just guide the lesson basically. And the teacher teaches it. So it's nice. It's really nice little break for me. And we do it once or twice a week. Lately, we've been just doing it once because we're getting to the point where it's almost all over. It's like a 30 week um, lesson. So 30 weeks goes by pretty quickly because our school year is 36. So we're pretty much done. And we have like taken a couple weeks off where we don't do it. Um, so we love it. Another thing that my daughter is doing on her own, I have in my like five star notebook or her five star notebook. She is doing a dog lover's journal. And this is something that she is learning about and she's really interested in. We go to the library um, for the past few months or so and they've been, she's been getting tons of books on dogs and she wants to read about therapy dogs and rescue dogs and all different types of breeds. And all of these breeds right here, they're gonna be going over um, how to care for a dog, fox terriers, Maltese, poodles, pugs, Rottweilers, like tons and tons of breeds. They're gonna be learning about um, Famous dogs, dogs anatomy, geography, history, math practice, creative writing, and dog science. And they have like all of these cute little like drawings and comic areas to make a comic book story. So creative writing. So I will do a flip through on this. If you guys are interested, let me know. I'm going to do a flip through. It's a um, Australian, um, it's not an Etsy shop, but it's an Australian website. I found this on YouTube. And I was so excited because my my daughter was like, why don't they have a dog unit study program anywhere? And I'm like, they don't have a dog unit study program. So I looked it up on YouTube one day and I found it and I purchased it. I think it was $18. I printed it out, but I think you could get it on Amazon. So I am going to try my hardest to do a flip through on this if you guys are interested. There's lots of things that she learns in here and she's been doing it all on her own. Um, they do geography, they do movie reviews, creative writing, drawing, sketching, um, dog comics and dog history. So this is really great. I will do like a flip through if you're interested. Also, another thing we do for like group subject, well, that one was for her specifically because my son's doing transportation unit study and she's doing dogs. Um, other subject units say a story of the world for history, and we've been reading Imagination Station to go along with it, learning about Eric the Red and Leif, his son, and Greenland and Iceland, and learning about Thor, the Thunder God, and the story about Thor. So we've been really into that. We've been learning about the kings of France. A couple other um, chapters that I can't remember because it's been a while now, but we um, have done a little bit of history, not as much as I thought this quarter, um, but that's okay. We've been working on like Viking longboats and making them and creating them. And she did some map work and has been going on the globe and looking at the countries. And um, she's been learning about dogs and where they're from. So we've kind of made this like a little transition um, of our homeschool where it's a little more child-led this quarter and I think we're gonna be doing a little more for quarter four with that and um, like I said she is just trying to read as many books about dogs at the library so those <laughs> okay the lawnmower okay so sorry about that you guys the lawnmower is going by okay so I'm gonna wrap this up. So that is what she's doing for her unit study for dogs. And um, she's been really, really into it, going to the library. Along with that, she has a little book club with her friend where they read about a dog breed and then they do a research paper and they type it out and they read it to each other when we meet up every week. And so that's been something fun that they've done on their own, that they enjoy. And it's a really nice way to meet up with friends and do a little bit of you know homeschooling together 
Sorry, <laughs> the lawnmowers are really loud. And then she also just finished up her book club with her co-op, so we're no longer doing it. It's all done for the year. That was a really good experience for her where she had a group of people on Zoom calls and they did a virtual book club and she got to experience, you know, how to write a book report or how to um, understand what the setting is and the characters. They got to rate how the book was, would they recommend the book to a friend, and they wrote the title and the author. And um, it was really, really great. I loved it a lot. I thought she learned a lot from it and it was great to do with a group of friends every other week. And so she got exposed to a lot of different new books and sometimes the teacher got to read a book at the end of the class. So it was a really good experience. And I would highly suggest if you guys have any virtual book clubs or co-ops to be a part of something that's simple like that, that gets them involved with their friends to get them inspired to read. It was really, really good. So that is what my daughter's been up to. We also have been finishing up in soccer for um, February and now she's doing basketball with her brother where they do like basketball clinics. So she's been doing that. And then I also mentioned in, in my son's first grade update is that we got to go see a play, um, you know, COVID friendly where we're separated, social distanced and we're wearing masks, but we got to go to like a really big theater and watch the little women play and my kids had an awesome time. So that was a highlight of our quarter three and one of our field trips that we got to do. So that is it, you guys. I hope you guys liked this video. Again, stay tuned for all the videos to come um, in the springtime and summer for our homeschool prep and curriculum and homeschool hauls that are coming up. If you guys are not subscribed, I would highly suggest to subscribe now because I'm going to be doing all those videos pretty soon for you guys. And it's going to be really, really fun. Um, to chat with you guys about that. I will see you guys in my next video. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.